In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at concavity and points of inflection. This is going to be part one of two because I'm going to focus on definitions and some tests and what's this going to look like pictorially. And in video two, we'll actually work out an example where we are doing it algebraically and we're finding the concavity and any points of inflection that might be there. All right, so we're going to start here with the definition of concavity. All right, we're going to let F be differentiable on an open interval. The graph is of F is concave up on the interval if F prime is increasing and concave down on the interval if F prime is decreasing on the interval. All right, so um, wordy definition all written out in words, but there is something definitely to memorize out of this. The graph of F, all right, so F is concave up if F prime is increasing. All right, that's going to be something that you're going to want to remember later when you get into curve sketching. Okay, it becomes very, very important. All right, and then it says, and F is concave down on the interval if F prime is decreasing. All right, so definitely two very important things in that paragraph definition that you would need to memorize that really doesn't stand out when you first read it. You don't necessarily think of, oh, hey, I better pull something out of that definition to remember. Okay, um, then for the second one is actually the test that we're going to use for finding concavity. We're going to let f be a function whose second derivative exists on the open interval. So as long as we can calculate that second derivative, we're in good shape here. If that second derivative is positive or greater than zero, then we know f is going to be concave up. If the second derivative is negative or less than zero, then we're going to know that f is concave down. All right, now this whole concave down, concave up thing, just to give you an idea of about what this is going to look like. All right, let's suppose I've got um, some random polynomial curve, maybe like that. Okay, that's my f of x curve. All right, now what this is, is this is going to tell us what concave up and concave down is. All right, think of this area right in here, all right, being concave down because it's kind of trapping things in a downward motion. So here's your concave down area. And then right in here, okay, the graph has changed directions, doing something different. Right in here, you're going to have concave up. All right, and then the point along the curve where it actually changes from concave down to concave up, that point is called a point of inflection. Okay, so there's our point of inflection. And we can actually um, algebraically, and we'll do that in the second video, we can actually algebraically find that value of specifically where the, the graph shifts from being concave down to concave up. All right, now a little bit more. Um, I do want to make a special note here. Um, I teach out of a Larson textbook, and in that particular textbook, along with some others, all right, um, the, some textbooks require that the tangent line exist at the point of inflection. So they just kind of throw that into that definition of point of inflection. Okay, so I've drawn some pictures here that might help with that. All right, if this is my curve, I've got concave up here, I've got concave down here, all right, but I can clearly dry it draw my tangent line right there, my tangent line exists. Okay, now, uh, we do have to, like, be flexible here because these are hand drawings, so I'm not doing a very good job putting that tangent line on necessarily. All right, maybe I had a curve that looked like this. Right in here is concave down, right in here is concave up. All right, and I can draw a tangent line as it goes around there because it would then ultimately cross and go to the other side. And here again, just another one, another nice little smooth polynomial curve. I got some concave up here, concave down here, and somewhere in there hopefully I've drawn that tangent line to look pretty decent. Okay now the tangent line requirement in that point of um, inflection definition takes care of a couple particular scenarios and I'm going to draw those out right here. All right let's suppose we've got some point C on our curve somewhere and let's suppose our graph kind of looked like this maybe. All right with a distinct little cusp thing going on right there. All right well I've got concave up here, I've got concave down here, all right, but right here I have no tangent line. I can't draw a tangent line there at that cusp, all right, so no tangent line, all right, means no point of inflection, all right, so no tangent line, I'm just going to do TL, all right, so C is not a point of inflection. Okay, from that scenario, C is not a point of inflection because I can't get a tangent line drawn. 
All right, now also we've got other functions that maybe kind of look like rational functions. All right, so maybe we've got horizontal asymptote going here. We have vertical asymptote going here. And we'll say that vertical asymptote there is at C. Okay, now a rational function could hug here, come down, hug down here. Same thing up here, hug this asymptote, and then come and hug this asymptote. All right, so again, another picture of, well, clearly this right here is concave down, and then I'm going to concave up, okay? So then the debate is, okay, well, is C considered a point of inflection? All right, well, when they have the requirement that there must be a tangent line present, then there is no tangent line at C. Obviously, that's a vertical asymptote, all right? C is not defined either. So that's important because C needs to be defined for there to be a point of inflection. But no tangent line, C is not defined, so you uh, C in this scenario is not a point of inflection. Okay, And so that just depends on what textbook you're using and whether or not they throw in that requirement of that tangent line. But in this short video, I just wanted to go over those definitions, give you those rules, make sure you wrote down, you know, second derivative greater than zero, then f is concave up, and second derivative less than zero, then con is f is concave down. All right, and then same thing with that first derivative. When the first derivative is increasing, you got concave up. When that first derivative is decreasing, you've got concave down. So definitely some things you need to take some notes on about this, and then go ahead and watch that second part so that you can see some of these problems worked out algebraically. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.